Hello everyone. This is a video on hysteroscopic myoma resection for a deep submucous myoma. Now this is one of the cases which becomes very difficult for those who are starting off in their hysteroscopy career and can really be very challenging. Let's first look at the patient profile of this particular patient. Uh, she is 35 years old. She has got one child and she is planning conception. And she has menorrhagia and intermenstrual bleeding since the last one year. The ultrasound reveals a 2.2 centimeter type 2 submucous myoma. So first of all, before starting, it is very important to know the FIGO grading of myomas before you start because you will have to interpret the ultrasound before starting the surgery. This is the image which was given on the ultrasound film. And uh, though the image is not very clear, we, were, we can get a fair bit of information from this image that helps us to actually plan the surgery. So this is the fibroid which has been seen. And if you look at the image carefully, this is how actually the, uh, the location of the fibroid is. So if we have to draw this, then this is the fibroid over here. And this is the entire endometrial cavity. Now you can see that the fibroid is playing the endometrial cavity at this level. And this is the entire projection of the fibroid into the endometrial cavity. Also, if you follow the endometrial canal, you can see that the endometrial canal goes this way and then turns after this point. Okay, So this is the point at which the fibroid starts its indentation inside the endometrial cavity and then it indents inside. So let us see how that is going to, uh, how we are going to use that information actually while we are planning our surgery. So let's go on to the next slide now. And in the next slide, you will see that though this much is the projection of the myoma, which is seen on hysteroscopy, uh, once, I mean, on the ultrasound, once you actually start doing the hysteroscopy, you find that you are only going to get this much amount of the myoma inside the uterine cavity because once the hysteroscope comes here, you will see a small projection inside. That means that the majority of the myoma is going to be intramural and you are going to have to actually scoop it out from inside the myometrium if you want to do a complete job in one single setting. Okay? So uh, that brings us to then the challenges of this case, which are going to be particularly perforation because if you scoop out too much of the myoma, then you're going to perforate. Fluid overload, because if you take a long time to perform the surgery, then a uh, patient will land up with fluid overload because the myoma size is important. But is what is also important is how much the depth of penetration of myoma inside the myometrium is. And because this is significantly more intramural, it is probably going to cause fluid overload quite fast. And the last one is that there is a possibility of a two-stage surgery which we want to try and avoid as much as possible. So let us see how it works. First step is always to do diagnostic hysteroscopy. Do not go in with the resectoscope. If you have a 26 French resectoscope or a 22 French, then some dilatation will be required that may induce artifacts. What I am doing here is that I have done a diagnostic hysteroscopy with a minimal distension. This allows the fibroid to bulge inside the cavity. If I keep a very high distension pressure, then what happens is that the fibroid will get pushed out by the distension pressure and will not be seen to the eye at all. We are going to see that as the video comes up. But you can see clearly there are two pathologies over here. This is the submucous fibroid and there is another polyp. While doing the surgery, do not waste too much time at the diagnostic part. What basically idea you have to get is where the fibroid is originating from. What is the grade of the fibroid? How difficult it is going to be? And where is the base where you're going to make the final cut in order to detach the fibroid from its attachment to the uterus? So once all this has been done, and this is a completely unedited video or a very minimally edited video. So I have now gone in with the resectoscope loop and first I choose to shave off the polyp. Now this is fairly simple. We have discussed this before in our previous video that the resectoscope loop has to go beyond the pathology which you want to cut and then uh, we are going to cut it. Uh, I told you before we use an Allen resectoscope and an Allen energy source uh, unit which gives a very good cutting. I usually use it at anywhere between 100 to 120 watts of pure cutting current. Now let us look at the same area and you will see that the polyp has now been shaved off but 
after shaving off the base of the polyp when i go to the area where the fibroid was located you can see that there is absolutely no fibroid seen here now we had seen that there was a fibroid located right over here but there is no fibroid located over here now and this is usually the problem that happens a lot of times when people start doing the surgery that the ultrasound did report that there is something but now nothing absolutely can be seen the problem is that there is a high intrauterine distension pressure which is not allowing you to see inside the cavity and not allowing the fibroid to bulge so simply reduce the distension pressure you can do it on the histomat or you can do it by stopping the distension pressure for some time and you can see the same fibroid bulges inside completely and now this is the fibroid that you have to treat so needless to say if your distension pressure is going to be high throughout the surgery you will not be able to see the fibroid it also make it a practice to work at low distension pressures as much as you can so that it will minimize fluid overload and you will be able to see the pathology is also very clear extend the loop cut it behind i told you we are using bipolar energy only in normal saline and the first cut reveals the fibroid okay you can see that the fibroid is over here and once the fibroid is revealed what i am also trying to do with my loop is that i am trying to gently push the fibroid now we have discussed before that you cannot activate the current when you are pushing but here this is a more advanced method where you are just touching the base or touching the part where the pseudo capsule is holding the fibroid back and then pushing it gently <clears throat> what this does is it detaches the connection or the connecting fibers between the fibroid and the pseudo capsule and the fibroid gradually starts bulging in so now you can clearly see that the extent of the fibroid is different and the myometrium behind it looks different so this is the entire thing which is the fibroid and this is the myometrium which is behind it which can be clearly seen to be in a pink color our end point of surgery is that all of this is going to come out and this pink myometrium is going to replace the whole thing that is when we know that we have reached up till the end point of the surgery so uh, let's move on to see how that works i'm just going to erase all this and then we'll move on right so we continue with the shaving and now you can notice that i have to go more and more deeper in order to get the rest of the fiber the ostium is here so i have already gone quite deep and there is a good possibility that i may perforate now if i am not careful so what i do is again i reduce the distension pressure and you find that the fibroid slowly slowly keeps bulging towards you so we do some cold loop dissection which means pushing the fibroid away with the loop without application of energy and just at the tip where you find the fibroid is there you apply energy and then you push it out as you are pushing you can see that this mass distinctly only moves away from the rest of the myometrium and that is the final limit of the fibroid where we are going to have to cut and uh, remove the fibroid completely from its attachment so by doing this all around circumferentially around the fibroid and trying to get the fibroid to shift from its location at the base so that the fibroid will gradually bulge inside and one significant part of it becomes intracavitary i am going to shave off that part and then repeat the process in the future so that is what we are going to do uh, since this is an unedited video the same step is going to be repeated many times uh i have kept the distension pressure at a bare minimum this is probably at 80 or 90 mm or maybe even lesser so that the fluid overload is less and you can see how the fibroid is gradually shifting out from its base and making its way into the intracavitary portion so this is the shaving that we are doing and more and more part now you find that it is easier to shave off this fibroid than it was before because the fibroid keeps coming inside but at 2.2 cm this is still a fairly large fibroid and i have got a long way to go before i end the brownish color of the fibroid versus the pinkish staining or hue of the myometrium over here is now very clear now i have gone quite deep and uh, i may have to stop the surgery for some time in order to allow for the uterus to squeeze the fibroid out so as deep as my loop can go i will keep on cutting and once i find that i cannot go any deeper or i am worried that by going any deeper i may cause perforation i will then uh, halt some time and reduce the distension pressure or rather remove the distension completely so that the fibroid can then bulge into the uterine cavity note that this is to be done only after you have a significant experience 
in removing type 0 and type 1 fibroids otherwise the beginner will easily land up with a perforation at this particular stage so uh, shave off the fibroid which is there like i said we are using bipolar current only we stopped using monopolar current many years ago for the risk of fluid overload and bipolar current used along with the correct electrocautery really works wonders and you get a very good plane of cut uh, as far as hysteroscopic surgery even advanced hysteroscopic surgery tcre or myoma resection is concerned so i think that's about as much of the fibroid as i can shave out and uh, because i am done with this now i am going to try to probably remove all the pieces outside so taking that break and removing the pieces is going to help me in two ways first is that it is going to uh, allow the fibroid to bulge inside because i have reduced the distension pressure and secondly i will get a more clear view now if you see as after waiting and going back in again you find that here now i am able to see a very clear u of myometrium versus the fibroid so i stopped the surgery once in between then i have restarted it again more of the fibroid has bulged into the cavity and now when i am going in with the resectoscope you find that i am able to shift the fibroid quite easily okay the fibroid is shifting from its base and here you can see a clear demarcation between the myometrium and the fibroid which is moving with the movement of my loop so we continue to cut it and you can also have pressurization and depressurization of the uterine cavity by switching on and off the inflow from time to time to cause the fibroid bulge more and more towards the cavity rather than you going inside and scooping the fibroid out making it that much more dangerous so here are the bits and pieces of the fibroid and uh, try and minimize the number of times that you have to do the resection so i have come out this is the time that i have come out this is the first time that the scope was removed the pieces were extracted and now i have waited for just 5 minutes more giving time for the bleeding to settle down and for the fibroid to bulge and gone inside when i go inside again the second time you find that the part which was not easily accessible to the resector company now has become much more accessible so it is easier for me to resect the fibroid this is actually now part of it is converted into a type 0 fibroid so again i go inside i shave with the loop and i keep pushing the parts of the fibroid away and here again you can see the clear differentiation this much is the myometrium and this is the fibroid which is getting scooped up. so we remove the fibroid pieces again the cut final cut has to be towards the surgeon not away from the surgeon and this is the last part of the fibroid which is being removed and at this point again i tell we tell you that how this is the fibroid which is remarkably different in color and this is the myometrium you can easily see it on a good camera system that this myometrium color is completely different from this fibroid color and this is the end point of your surgery which you are actually looking for uh it is needless to say that you have to be as fast as possible while doing this surgery because as you go more and more intramyometrial the chances of you causing fluid overload increase per every minute we also give vasopressin sometimes to these patients intra cervical injection of vasopressin at the 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock position delays the absorption of fluid and causes less fluid overload chances also giving us more time to work inside the cavity and decreasing the risk of fluid overload so a two stage surgery can be probably completed in one sitting so this is the last of the fibroid this is the base of the fibroid which is now been completely shaved off and you can see that there is hardly anything remaining at the base completely the base has been removed and uh, there is there is no need to even do an ultrasound to check if the fibroid is remaining later on because the fibroid has been completely removed from its base this empty portion is the place where the fibroid was located and now there is only myometrium over there so this is a 100% complete surgery which has been performed notice before we close that uh, if you see this in relation to the ostium so this in this frame you can see that this is the ostium over here uh, this is the ostium way over here and this is the uh, tunneling or this is the cavity which has now been created so a significant depth of the tissue has been cut out and you need to be careful while doing this otherwise you are likely to cause perforation very easily this part of course will heal very well if you are worried about bleeding you can put an intrauterine pediatric polycatheter but it will heal off very well 
Also, another important thing to note is that the opposing endometrium is normal, so there will be less chances of Chinakia formation. Here again, you see the depth of the cut which we have done and the ostium which is over here. So earlier you were only able to see up till this much margin, and now the, the only this much was seen earlier, and now you are able to see this entire part which is where the fibroid was located, and it has been now completely removed. So. Uh, this is the entire depth of the surgery which has now been completed and we can just take a quick look to see the hemostasis and uh, the species can also be removed with the help of the resectoscope or with the oven forceps. So if you like this video, please click on the icon above to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates. Any questions or comments are most welcome in the comment section and I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much for your patience and for listening.